Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to talk through The Great Mental Models Volume 3 Systems and Mathematics by Rhiannon Bobine and Rosie Lazrovitsa, published in 2021. This book explores the core mental models from systems and mathematics that can be applied to various aspects of life. It emphasizes the interconnectedness of systems and mathematics and provides real-world examples to illustrate each concept. The book aims to inspire readers to apply these models in their own lives and discover analogous uses. It also discusses how feedback loops are a crucial mental model in understanding system behaviors and human interactions. The book highlights the importance of filtering feedback, identifying good feedback, and incorporating it to improve outcomes. It also introduces the two basic types of feedback loops, balancing and reinforcing. The book also reflects on the value and limitations of these models and encourages curiosity, practice, and reflection to fully realize their potential. The author explores four aspects of social systems, creating future incentives, influencing behavior at the margins, dealing with information cascades, and building trust. Creating the right future incentives involves considering the long-term consequences of decisions and avoiding reinforcing feedback loops that lead to future problems. Influencing behavior at the margins recognizes that not everyone changes their behavior at the same rate and intensity, and tailoring incentives to different groups can have significant positive impacts Dealing with information cascades involves addressing the spread of imperfect information and using strategies such as public disclosure and high-profile prosecutions to interrupt negative cascades. Building trust is crucial in complex societies, and feedback loops play a role in enabling trust by providing information for decision-making and encouraging cooperative behavior. T-trust can be encouraged and maintained through feedback loops and the enforcement of contracts. Legal systems enforce contracts and penalize noncompliance, which incentivizes trust and cooperation. Additionally, rules and penalties can be imposed to encourage cooperation for the common good, such as fishing quotas to prevent depletion of resources. The author also discusses the concept of equilibrium and homeostasis in systems. Equilibrium refers to a stable state where forces and variables are balanced, while homeostasis involves making continuous adjustments to maintain ideal conditions. Feedback loops and information play a crucial role in maintaining equilibrium and homeostasis. For example, in the doctor-patient relationship, shared decision, making and providing information to patients can lead to better health outcomes. The writer discusses the importance of building trust between doctors and patients in order to effectively communicate and make informed decisions. He mentions how acknowledging the needs of parents in neonatal intensive care units NICUS, is crucial to avoid dissatisfaction. He also explores the complexity of medical situations, which involve multiple people, uncertainty, and strong emotions. He emphasizes the need to create a communication environment that allows information to flow and be understood. The author then shifts to discussing the concept of equilibrium, using examples such as card tricks and the Biosphere 2 experiment. He highlights the complexity of maintaining equilibrium and the importance of considering various factors in order to achieve balance. Bobin and Lazrovitsa discuss the concept of bottlenecks and how they can affect systems, Bottlenecks are often disguised as false dependencies, where certain conditions are set to justify procrastination. It is important to identify and validate bottlenecks before attempting to solve them, as addressing the wrong problem can lead to unintended consequences. The construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway provides an example of how dealing with bottlenecks in an expedient way can cause issues later on. The railway project faced various challenges such as a shortage of local supplies, seasonal weather limitations, and a labor bottleneck. The attempt to solve the labor shortage by importing workers and subcontracting led to compromised safety and poor quality materials. The lesson here is to be careful in addressing bottlenecks and consider foundational improvements to prevent recurring issues. Bottlenecks can also inspire innovation, as seen in the invention of nylon and synthetic rubber during times of resource shortages in wars. Understanding bottlenecks and their impact is crucial when planning and scaling systems. As systems scale up, they become more complex, with more connections and interdependencies between parts. 
When envisioning business growth, it is important to anticipate bottlenecks and breakdowns that may occur as certain areas scale faster than others. Large companies require different organizational structures and systems to ensure smooth operations, compared to small companies where face-to-face -face interactions suffice, however, as a company grows, divisions and teams can be formed to manage social dynamics and communication bottlenecks. It is crucial to maintain resilience in a scaling system by keeping independence between its parts. Long-lived Japanese companies tend to stay small and retain strong internal values, allowing them to weather economic difficulties. Scaling up is not always beneficial, and staying small and flexible can be advantageous depending on the desired goals and outcomes. The history of artificial lighting demonstrates how systems change and scale as technology advances. From simple unworked pieces of limestone to whale oil to gas lighting, each advancement required a corresponding increase in infrastructure and systems to fuel it. Scaling up lighting systems allowed for extended productive time, transforming human activities and enabling factory work to continue at any time. The transition to gas lighting led to a centralized supply connected to all buildings in an area, further removing individuals from the process of making their own light. This shows how systems scale and become intricately interconnected as technologies evolve. The increase in artificial light, from gas street lamps to electric light, has had a significant impact on human activities and the way we conduct our lives. With the introduction of artificial light, people were no longer confined to their homes at night and new activities and businesses emerged. However, as artificial light coverage increased, new concerns and challenges emerged, such as the potential for total surveillance. Scaling up a system like the development of artificial light comes with both benefits and drawbacks. It is crucial to be aware of how scaling up can impact a system as a whole, and to consider the need for margins of safety and backups to ensure resilience and mitigate the risk of failure. Learning is also a vital tool in developing a margin of safety, as it reduces blind spots and allows individuals to adapt to changing situations. Margin of safety is important in various contexts, such as astronaut training and preserving artwork during times of conflict. One need to anticipate and prepare for worst-case scenarios, even if they seem unlikely. Broad competence and redundancy are more valuable than specialization and efficiency when it comes to dealing with extreme events. The book also introduces the concept of churn, which refers to the constant turnover or attrition of components within a system. Churn can be observed in various areas, such as customer retention in business and employee turnover in organizations. Understanding and managing churn can be beneficial for optimizing systems and achieving long-term success. Churn, the process of replacing components within a system, is a natural and necessary part of maintaining a healthy system. It allows for the introduction of new ideas and perspectives, prevents stagnation, and promotes adaptability. The book explores two examples to illustrate the significance of churn. The first example is Synanin, a drug addiction rehabilitation program that evolved into a cult. By eliminating churn and exerting control over its members, Synanin became violent and coercive. The second example is Borbaki, a group of mathematicians who compiled all existing mathematical knowledge into textbooks through regular turnover and the inflow of new members. Borbaki remained relevant and contributed to the advancement of mathematics. Churn can lead to improvement and innovation within a system and it is important to allow individuals the freedom to leave and to welcome new additions. By understanding the underlying algorithms that drive systems, it becomes possible to intervene and improve their functioning. A constitution can serve as a high-level algorithm to guide decision-making and prevent the concentration of power. A constitution is a vital tool for leaders to work for the benefit of the people and not their own gain. It serves as guidance during times of difficulty and reassurance for the people. The process of designing a constitution is meticulous and takes into account political ideals, but constitutions are not limited to countries alone. Any group of people with rules and leaders can benefit from having a constitution. The concept of a constitution evolved from pirate articles, which functioned like algorithms to ensure successful pirate operations. Pirates used a democratic system with strict rules enforced by punishments and democratic elections to maintain order and collaboration. 
the success of pirate leaders like Ching Shi shows that algorithms and tight systems of rules can create cohesion and consistent outcomes. The author also explores the concept of algorithms and how they can be applied in various contexts. He provides an example of Bayer's algorithmic-like approach to discovering antibiotics, specifically the discovery of the sulfa antibiotic. The process involved testing thousands of chemicals until they found the desired result, a chemical that effectively treated strep infections. The discovery of the sulfa antibiotic revolutionized drug research and set the standard for finding new medicines. The author then discusses the concept of complex adaptive systems, which are systems that are greater than the sum of their parts and adapt to changes in the environment. Understanding these systems requires embracing complexity and being open to learning and change. The author also introduces the concept of critical mass, where a system reaches a tipping point and undergoes a significant change. He emphasizes the importance of the effort required to reach critical mass and the need to focus on the buildup, not just the tipping point. The author mentions the suffrage movement in New Zealand and how it reached critical mass. The movement gained support from prominent male politicians and was aided by women receiving equal access to education. Educationalist Learmonth Dalrymple played a crucial role in ensuring girls received the same education as boys. The movement was also entwined with the temperance movement, which sought to restrict alcohol consumption. Women who suffered the most from widespread heavy drinking were influential in both movements. The suffrage movement was led by Kate Shepard and involved organizing petitions in favor of women's right to vote. After numerous attempts, the bill passed in 1893. The success of the suffrage movement in New Zealand inspired similar movements globally. Bobine and Lazeroes's book also touches on the concept of critical mass in social change and its application to urban planning, emphasizing the importance of self-sustaining interactions in cities. While planned cities often segregate different functions and prioritize visual order, they may fail to encourage interactions and promote a sense of community. The example of Brasilia, the capital city of Brazil, is given where specific areas are designated for living, working, and shopping, but mixed-use areas and pedestrian-friendly infrastructure are lacking. As a result, the city lacks street culture and cohesive communities. Critical mass refers to the amount of material or interactions needed for a system to change states while emergence refers to the unpredictable capabilities and properties that arise when examining systems as a whole, rather than their individual parts. The mothers of the Plaza de Mayo in Argentina are presented as an example of emergence, where a group of powerless individuals came together to demand answers and challenge the regime, ultimately leading to international awareness of the regime's abuses. Additionally, the writer highlights the importance of social interaction and cultural learning in human innovation, where collective knowledge and interconnected minds allow for the creation of things that no one person could accomplish alone. Cultural learning is a powerful process that allows humans to tap into a vast pool of knowledge beyond the scope of any individual. Cultural learning works by individuals imitating and improving on what they learn from others. These small improvements accumulate over time and are transmitted through social networks, creating what is known as a collective brain. The collective brain, along with cultural transmission, leads to the development of emergent properties such as language. Cultural learning has had a significant impact on human evolution, shaping our bodies, instincts, and ability to adapt and survive. It is through cultural learning that humans have become smarter and more innovative. Cultural evolution is not guided or prescribed but rather the result of a large network of freely interacting minds. The butterfly effect, on the other hand, illustrates the sensitivity of chaotic systems to initial conditions. Chaotic systems, such as weather patterns, are difficult to predict accurately because small differences in starting conditions can lead to significant divergent outcomes. This challenges the assumption that we can completely understand and predict the world based on deterministic rules. Irreducibility is another concept that reminds us of the limits of our understanding. It refers to the point beyond which a system loses its meaning or function when simplified further. Understanding irreducibility helps us identify the minimum elements necessary for recognition and communication. For example, 
wartime propaganda posters exemplify the use of irreducibility by conveying complex messages with few simple graphics and slogans, these posters effectively communicated themes such as patriotism, behavior change, simplicity, can convey a powerful message, but too much simplicity may result in the loss of meaning. Topography is used as an example to illustrate irreducibility, with the recognition of irreducible elements in letters being essential for legibility. Irreducible elements may vary depending on the context, and designers need to identify and retain those elements. Additionally, the book introduces Gall's Law, which states that complex systems that work evolve from simple systems, and the law of diminishing returns, which explains how past a certain point, additional inputs lead to diminishing amounts of output. The example of the Viking raids on Paris is used to illustrate this concept. At first, the Vikings were successful in extracting large ransoms from the unprepared Franks. However, over time, the Franks fortified their city, and the wealth available to raid diminished. The Vikings faced diminishing returns as raiding Paris became more difficult and less rewarding. Eventually, Viking leader Rollo made a different choice and accepted an offer from the Franks to settle in Normandy. Diminishing returns in other contexts is also discussed, such as mass incarceration and exploitation films. Overall, the author emphasizes the need to recognize and adapt when diminishing returns set in. He also discusses the characteristics of different distributions and their applications. He explains that distributions can be discrete or continuous, symmetric or asymmetric, have upper and lower limits, and the likelihood of extreme values. The normal distribution, or bell curve, is the most familiar and widely used distribution. He describes phenomena that cluster around a central value. Common measurements like height and IQ follow a normal distribution. On the other hand, power law distributions, which have clustered values at the extremes, are seen in wealth distribution. The book also explores the philosophy of Epicurus, who argued that pleasure is the measure of a good life. Epicurus emphasized that pleasure is the absence of pain and advocated for a simple and mindful life. The concept of compounding is also discussed, highlighting its ability to generate exponential growth over time in various areas such as finance, knowledge, and relationships. The writer emphasizes the importance of making continuous progress and the unpredictability of the outcomes of compounded investments in the book, The Chosen Few by Maristella Botticini and Svi Eckstein, the authors explore the impact of Jewish education norms and how they created opportunities for the Jewish people. The Jewish religion introduced a requirement for fathers to send their sons to primary school to learn to read and study the Torah, which was a sacrifice with no immediate economic returns. However, over time, this investment in literacy and education allowed the Jewish people to transition from farming to more lucrative professions such as craftsmen, merchants, and moneylenders. The authors argue that literacy not only provided a competitive edge, but also raised productivity and earnings in these professions. This example highlights the power of investing in knowledge and how it can lead to unexpected opportunities and advantages. Similarly, Bobin and Lazarus's book discusses how individuals can leverage their past experiences and relationships to compound their learning and build stronger networks, creating a cumulative advantage. Sidney Weinberg, a successful Wall Street executive who achieved remarkable success through building and leveraging relationships. Weinberg started his career as a janitor's assistant and seized an opportunity to prove himself by reorganizing the mailroom. This impressed his supervisor and led to his promotion. He continued to strengthen his relationships within the company and used his connections to gain political influence. Weinberg served on numerous corporate boards and befriended CEOs by being helpful. He also supported Franklin D. Roosevelt's campaign and organized an advisory board of corporate executives. Throughout his career, he advised five U.S. presidents. Weinberg's success was built on the power of relationships and the compounding effects they have in creating opportunities. The law of large numbers states that larger sample sizes yield more accurate results in probability calculations. Small sample sizes can lead to skewed and misleading results. In scientific studies, larger sample sizes are preferred as they reduce margin of error and increase confidence in the generalizability of the results. 
However, there are trade-offs and small studies can still provide valuable evidence or be more ethical in certain situations. Sample sizes also need to be random and representative of the population being studied. The importance of sample size is illustrated by the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary, which required reading all books in the English language to accurately define and catalog words. Sample size is also relevant in insurance, where a larger sample size reduces uncertainty and allows for more accurate predictions. It is important for samples to be diverse and representative to avoid bias and ensure accurate insights and decision-making. In her book, Criado Perez argues that the introduction of big data can exacerbate discrimination and perpetuate old injustices if biases are not recognized and addressed. She emphasizes the importance of representative data sets that accurately reflect the diversity of the population, as data determines resource allocation and decision-making. The concept of randomness is explored with the recognition that humans tend to see order and patterns in the world, often overlooking the role of randomness. Embracing randomness can lead to greater creativity and less predictability. The author highlights the misconception that past events have a direct influence on future outcomes, when in reality, randomness prevails. In the context of writing, randomness can serve as a valuable tool to inspire and overcome creative blocks. Overall, understanding and working with randomness can provide new perspectives and opportunities. Human tendency to create a narrative and organize the world makes us predictable and susceptible to certain biases. This predictability is often exploited by professional magicians who use tricks that rely on our availability bias and narrative tendencies. They make us believe that our choices are random when they are actually pseudo-random. The magician Chan Canasta became famous for his tricks that seemed to rely on chance, but actually he used his impressive memory and the ability to give the impression of randomness. The book also explores the concept of randomness in divination rituals and highlights the importance of understanding regression to the mean, where extreme results tend to be balanced out over time. It emphasizes the value of appreciating the average and the limitations of expecting outlier success all the time. The book then discusses the failure of the Ford Edsel, a highly anticipated car release in the 1950s. Ford built up a lot of hype around the Edsel through a two-year advertising campaign. But when the car was finally revealed, it fell short of people's expectations. The Edsel was not as attractive as people had hoped, and had some technical issues. The overhyping of the car and the disappointment that followed contributed to its failure in the market. The book also explores the concept of regression to the mean, where extreme successes or failures are often followed by more average outcomes. The story of the Trung sisters, Vietnamese national heroes who rebelled against Chinese rule, is used as an example of an outlier event that was not a new standard. Identifying and addressing the weakest part of a system can have a significant impact on the overall performance. The authors also discuss the failure of East Germany's attempt to build a computer industry in the late 1970s and 80s. Due to the political climate and embargo, the East Germans resorted to stealing technology from Western countries through their Ministry for State Security, commonly known as the Stasi. However, their reliance on theft and lack of development and innovation resulted in a complete failure. The author argues that the East Germans ignored the zero in their system, which was their lack of knowledge and ability to develop technology on their own. Similarly, the importance of avoiding zeros is highlighted in the context of crop diversity where relying on a single crop can lead to failure if something goes wrong. The writer discusses the power of transforming limitations into strengths and finding alternative ways to achieve equal results. He explores the concept of equivalence, highlighting that things don't have to be the same to be equal. The examples provided include the management of speech impediments, the recurrence of historical events, simultaneous scientific discoveries, and different approaches to fashion and death rituals across cultures. The book emphasizes the importance of recognizing alternative paths to success and understanding the underlying principles that drive equivalent outcomes. By embracing versatility and recognizing the many ways to achieve goals, we can better connect with others and foster innovation. Death and funerals are approached differently across cultures, but the intent behind them remains the same. 
to console the living and deal with the deceased. The funeral is considered a celebration of a rite of passage for both the deceased and the living. Different traditions and ceremonies help people process death and grieve for lost loved ones. Equivalence is a lens that helps us appreciate the variety of ways people meet their need to process death. Orders of magnitude, which represent large or small numbers in a compact fashion, are crucial in disciplines like science, mathematics, and engineering. They enable us to compare numbers and provide context. Surface area is the amount of something that is in contact with or able to react to the outside world. Increasing surface area can lead to more creativity and innovation, while reducing surface area can enhance security and defense. In guerrilla warfare, small, mobile bands of attackers have an advantage because they operate in small autonomous units and are not attached to occupying a specific territory, reducing the surface area for their adversaries to attack. This strategy allows guerrillas to be hard to deter and gives them fewer points of vulnerability. The same principle applies to map making, where maps reduce the surface area of a territory by choosing which details to include and omit. Maps simplify the territory to provide useful content and omit unnecessary detail that would confuse or distract. The concept of surface area also applies in life and business, where navigating between global and local maxima requires knowing when to increase exposure and vulnerability in order to reach higher peaks of success. Bobin and Lazrovica introduced the story of how the Jogbra company was built, emphasizing the importance of taking risks and learning from failures. The founder, Hinda Miller Lindahl, decided to sell the sports bra in sporting goods stores instead of lingerie stores, as women were getting into sports in large numbers during the late 1970s. However, convincing male sales reps and store owners that Jogbras were athletic equipment was a challenge. Despite these obstacles, the company had a successful first year and continued to grow. Lindahl highlights the importance of experimentation and being aware of one's niche in achieving success. The book also explores the concept of global and local maxima, comparing optimization to finding the lowest point in a town and the evolution of the band queen as examples. It emphasizes the need to take risks, learn from failures, and make both big and small changes in order to reach one's full potential. The third volume of the Great Mental Models series introduces readers to almost 50 models of timeless knowledge. The author emphasizes that simply reading about these models is not enough, they have to be actively used in order to be truly beneficial. They suggest selecting one model per week and examining one's life through that lens, taking notes and reflecting on observations and experiences. By doing so, individuals can learn from their mistakes, identify where each model is most useful, and build a comprehensive latticework of interconnected models. Using mental models is a lifelong journey, and future volumes will provide additional tools. The goal is to improve decision-making and lead a more meaningful life by understanding and working with the fundamental principles that govern the world. Thank you so much for watching this video. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We'll see you in the next video.